And we're glad to be in the number one more time. Let us all stand at this time for prayer and for our scripture reading. If you're at home, just bow your head, close your eyes, and give God reverence as we pray. If you have a prayer request that you would like to, amen, raise your hand at this time before the Lord, or some people raise his two hands, hallelujah, amen. Yeah, you can raise two hands if you want to. Hallelujah. I got to hold the mic with one of them. Hallelujah. But let us look to the Lord and let us make our petition known unto him. Father God, we come to you in the mighty name of Jesus, thanking you for another day that you have given to us. It's only of your mercies that we are not consumed. Hallelujah. They are fresh every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. Bless us, Lord, as we go forth in the message, as we go forth in the balance of this service. We pray that you will have your way in our lives. We thank you for your divine protection over Zion Temple, First Pentecostal Church, and over the people of God. Many of us could have been sick by this time, but you have been good to us, hallelujah. And you have not allowed the virus, hallelujah, to affect us, hallelujah. I thank you from the bottom of my heart for your divine protection and for your care for this house of God. Bless us, Lord, as we preach your word today. Use us for your honor and for your glory. And remember every hand that is raised for prayer. I pray that you will grant their request. In the mighty name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. No, you may stand. I'm sorry. I hate to have you getting down, getting up all the time. But, <laughs> but next we want to have our scripture reading for today. And it is found in 2 Corinthians chapter 12. And we're going to read verse 7 through 10. 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 7 through 10. And we will read it uh, together. And when you have it, say amen, and we will begin reading. Do you have it? Are you ready? 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 7 through 10. Verse 7 said, And lest I should be exalted above measure through the abundance of the revelations, there was given to me a thorn in the flesh, the messenger of Satan to buffet me, lest I should be exalted above measure. For this thing I besought the Lord thrice, that, I, that it might depart from me. But he said unto me, My grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities, that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities, in reproaches, in necessities, in persecutions and in distresses for Christ's sake. For when, when I am weak, then am I strong. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading and hearing of his word. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Our thought today, all of the verses are very good, but the thought that we want to leave with you today is found in verse Nine, and it said, and he said unto me, my grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. 
And the subject for today is God's amazing grace. God's amazing grace. What is grace? Grace, the Greek word in 2 Corinthians 12 and 9, for grace is spelled C-H-A-R-I-S, and it is pronounced kahar is number 54 and 85, which means benefit, favor, or give. Amen. God's grace to us is a gift that has been granted unto us by him. God is sovereign. God is powerful. God is a man God. He is mystical. Hallelujah. And he don't need anybody in this room or anybody that's watching on live streaming. He don't need them. I said he don't need them. He created the world <clears throat> by himself. So why, why would he need us? Hallelujah. But he loves us with an everlasting love, hallelujah, and has decided in his mind to show us kindness, benefit, and favor, hallelujah. He loves the spirit-filled children of God who are called the saints, hallelujah. He does good things for us because he loves us. Hallelujah. If it was not for his grace, we would not be saved today. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. You know many of us have done enough things to make him mad and make his judgment fall upon us, but when judgment was ready to fall, mercy rejoiced against judgment and grace said, don't kill them, because I want to save them. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Don't destroy them, Lord. Don't wipe them out, because I want to save them. Yeah. I want them to be a part of my kingdom. I want them to live eternally with me. I want them to rejoice in the eternal bliss of Heaven. I know they're bad, but don't kill them. <laughs> I know they don't even look my way sometimes, but don't kill them. I know even when I preach to them, some of them don't listen. I, I know, I know the human family are disobedient many times, but I still want to save them. Hallelujah. For by grace are ye saved through faith. And that not of yourself. It is the gift of God. He has raised us up in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. He has elevated us from being down in the pit of sin and put us in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. You are the children of God. You are the sons of God. You are the saints of God. You may not have been anybody before, but you are somebody now. Hallelujah. Grace lifted me. Hallelujah. Grace lifted you and put you in a great and wonderful place with God. Hallelujah. His grace is greater than our sin. His grace is greater than our wrongdoings. His grace is greater than our, hallelujah, human way. Hallelujah. And his grace saved us 
and brought us in to the house of the Lord. Hallelujah. I thank God for his grace. I know I offended him many times, but I thank him for his grace. I, I know he could have cut me off, but I thank him for his grace. Songwriter said, your grace and mercy brought me through. Hallelujah. I'm living each moment because of you. I want to thank you and praise you too. Your grace, your grace, your grace and mercy brought me through. Hallelujah. Thank God for his grace. Hallelujah. You don't have to go to hell. You don't have to go to eternity and burn forever. But you can have everlasting life. The life that is sweet and my joy is complete because I'm saved. 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 Woo, shut up. Hallelujah. Thank God for his grace. Thank God for his mercy. Thank God for his kindness that he has shown towards us. Hallelujah. There are two great works of grace in the Bible. The first one is salvation. He takes a sinner and saves them and makes them a saint. He washes them in his own blood through the washing of regeneration and the infilling of the Holy Ghost. And he makes them clean and he makes them valuable as far as God is concerned. Hallelujah. He said in Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 1, You hath he quickened who were dead in trespasses and sin. Hallelujah. Uh, I don't want you to shout. I just want you to listen for a while. Hallelujah. But think about how good God has been to all of you. Hallelujah. When I think of the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for me, my soul cries out, hallelujah, praise God for saving me. Hallelujah. 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 Makes my heart jump up and down when I think how good that he really is. When I can look at his mercy and look at his kindness and look at his love that he has poured out upon the human family. Makes me want to thank him for being good. Thank him for saving me. Thank you for not killing me. Thank you for bringing me out of the horrible pit of sin. Hallelujah. We need to give God thanks for his amazing grace and what he has done in our lives. The second work of grace is in our sermon today, and it is divine empowerment to do great works and to sustain us in the times of our human weakness. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I've heard people brag about they don't need nobody. And I, I, I got this, I got this, I got this. I wonder what they got, hallelujah. Because got this, got this, got this, ain't made no change in your life, so you ain't got it. God's got it, hallelujah. <laughs> You ain't in control. He's in control. You're not the one that's driving the car. He's driving the car. He's driving the bus, too. <laughs> Hallelujah. 
Because if it was not for divine empowerment, we would all be destroyed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In our text today, Paul is being challenged in his apostolic authority. And he's trying to tell them about his credentials and the revelation that the Lord has given to him. Hallelujah. He said, I don't want to boast in my revelations that I've got from the Lord because he freely gave those to me. I don't want to uh, get, uh, you know, uh, real high in my thinking because of all the blessings that God has given me. He said, I know the man uh, about 14 years ago. Whether he was in the body or out of the body, I don't know. But one thing I do know that this man was caught up into the third heaven. Ooh, hallelujah. I don't know whether he was in the body or out of the body, but I know this man. This I'm very familiar with this man. And when I look in the commentary, it said it was probably when he was stoned in Lystra and Derby, and he had died from the stones that the people had tried to kill him with. But he don't call his own name because he said, I don't want to boast. I don't want to say Paul, 14 years ago, was caught up in the paradise, in the third heaven. <laughs> Not that one you see where the stars and moon and everything is, but there's another one, must be two of them, beyond that one. It is the paradise of God. It is where the saints who die in the Lord go. It's the place where there is, hallelujah, sleep and rest from weariness and from sickness and from all the other stuff that's going on. Hallelujah. Paul said, I don't know whether he was in the body or out of the body. But he said in verse 4, I was there. Hmm. I don't know how I got there, and I don't know the process of getting me there, but when I woke up, I was in paradise. Hallelujah. And I saw things that it was not really lawful for a man to utter. There's a lot of people in the earth that wants to know what I'm looking at. Hallelujah. There's a lot of people who are anticipating coming to paradise and like to have a preview of what it's like. But I'm sorry, y'all. It's so glorious, I can't tell you. I'm being forbidden to tell you what I saw, but I liked it there. It was nice there. Hallelujah. It was a beautiful place. Hallelujah. Ooh, you know. I was caught up in the paradise. And catch this. I heard unspeakable words which it is not lawful for a man to utter. Uh, I don't know what the words were, but he said, I, I, I can't tell you what I saw, and I can't go over the words that I heard. Uh, they're a secret. Hallelujah. And of such a man, I will glory yet not of myself i will not glory but in my infirmities i will not boast i will not speak of myself 
being in paradise. I will not boast about being caught up to paradise, but I will boast and I will glory in my infirmities. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. For though I would desire to glory, I shall not be a fool, for I will say the truth. But now I forbear. I don't even want to tell you. You're questioning my apostleship. You're questioning whether I'm a true apostle or not. But I ain't going to argue with you. I don't have to identify myself. I don't have to tell you everything I did for the Lord. I don't have to tell you everything I saw in paradise. I don't have to go over all of these miracles that have happened by my hands, all these churches that have been established, all these books that I have written, 13 books of the 27 books in the New Testament. Ooh, hallelujah. I got a resume that is mighty long, and God gave it to me. But he said, when he called me to go to the Gentiles, I'm going to show you how great things you must suffer for my name's sake. Not because you try to kill the church. But I want to keep you down, Paul. i got to give you something which is a thorn in the flesh to keep you down. If I don't have nothing to keep you down, you're going to get big-headed and fly away. But i got to have something to keep your feet on the ground and your mind from being elevated to think that you are above what? God has already made you. Hallelujah. But I am an apostle and I have the proof that I am an apostle. Hallelujah. For though I would desire to glory or boast or praise my own self, I shall not be a fool. That's foolish. For I will say the truth, and now I forbear. I don't even want to tell you that it's really true. Lest any man should think of me above that which he seeth me to be, or that he heareth of me. And God is controlling my life. Now I want you to know, saints, he's controlling your life too. He's controlling your life too. Paul said, lest I should be exalted above measure, he gave me a thorn in the flesh. Hallelujah. I've heard many people preach about the thorn in the flesh and they have all kinds of answers to what Paul had in his flesh, but I think I found a biblical answer to what was in his flesh that kept bothering him. Galatians 4, 13 through 15 said, Ye know how through infirmity of the flesh I preached the gospel unto you at the first. And my temptation or test was in my flesh. Hallelujah. Ye despise me not. You did not reject me, but you received me as an angel of God, even as Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Where is then the blessedness he speak of? Why have I become your enemy? Because I told you the truth. Why are you against me now? For well, I bear record that if it had been possible, you would have plucked out your own eyes and given them to me. 
Hallelujah. I read in a book one time, and he said, the description of the Apostle Paul said he was a short, bald-headed man with watery eyes. Hallelujah. That's the way they describe him. That's what I read in the book, y'all. Go get the author of the book. <laughs> I'm not putting him down, but they said he wasn't very tall. You know, he was short, and he didn't have no hair. And I ain't going to work on that either. <laughs> but he had watery eyes. He may have had glaucoma, or he may have had some affliction in his eyes, but the people, when they looked at him, hallelujah, they saw that he was crying. And he was crying so much, he couldn't hardly preach. And when he would preach, tears would run down his face. Somebody said, well, that ain't too bad. Well, that's what the Galatians thought about him. But in the Corinthians church, they said in 2 Corinthians 10, 9 and 10, they say uh, that I may seem as if I would terrify them by letters. Verse 10, for his letters, say they, are weighty and powerful, but his bodily presence is weak and his speech is contemptible. That's the way the Corinthians saw him. Hallelujah. But Paul said, you love me so much in Galatia, you would have, if it was possible, you would have took your own eyes out and gave them to me. But now you don't like me no more. In the next verse, he talks about they don't like him no more because he told them the truth. Uh, people change. They change like the weather. <laughs> One time they for you, the next time they're against you. One time they praise you, the next time they talk about you. Uh, I'm glad to be in the number. One more time. <laughs> Hallelujah. But he said in our text, lest I should be exalted above measure, Hallelujah. Through the abundance of my revelations, there was given to me a thorn in the flesh. Hallelujah. Every time Paul seemed like he was getting too high, God would allow something to happen in his body or in his eyes to bring him back down. So that was sad. That was sad that he had to go through all this ridicule and people looking at him and making fun of him and talking about him and running him down and making him feel like he was nothing. Hallelujah. But it was all in the plan of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, I hope you understand what I'm preaching about. Wicked people suffer, but righteous people suffer too. Uh, maybe I better say that again. I'm not trying to get you up out the seat today, but wicked people suffer because of their evil deeds. But Saints suffer because God is trying to perfect their character and help them to grow in the Lord until they get out of their human DNA and begin to look like, act like, talk like Jesus. 
songwriter wrote, I wonder why the test when I'm trying to do my best. Well, son and daughter, you'll understand it better by and by. God don't hate you. I wonder why God allowed this to happen to me. Well, he allows it to happen to the righteous. The same as happens to the wicked. Bad things with mercy and grace come upon good people the same way that it comes upon bad people. Now this part is interesting, and I want you to go with me to the book of Job, chapter 2, verse 6 through 8. The book of Job. Chapter 2, verse 6 through 8. Job was a righteous man. God said there was none in the earth like him. He was perfect. He was upright. He feared God. He ensued evil. He held on to his integrity he passed the first test successfully because Satan had told God, the only reason why he serves you is because you got protection around. Y'all heard that before? No wonder he served you because you got all that protection around you. But if you let the protection down, let me touch his family, let me touch his riches. Let me lay our hands on the things that he holds very dear to himself. Let me take those away and see if he still serves you. God said, okay, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. God said, go ahead. God said, that's okay. Why would God say, go ahead? Because he knew oh, that what Job went through would never take his love for God away from him. He told his wife when she said, curse God and die, he said, you talk like a foolish woman. Shall we receive good at the hand of the Lord and not evil? Is he like a lollipop or an ice cream cone that tastes good, 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 and there's nothing bad, there's nothing trying, there's nothing that tries my soul that ever comes from him? He's too good. He's too good. But God has to test us. Just like he had to test Paul to see, ooh, hallelujah, if he would go ballistic and do a whole bunch of crazy stuff, or is he going to go and seek God? Hallelujah. That's back in the other verse, but I'm jumping ahead a little. Hallelujah. But righteous people suffer just like unrighteous people suffer except for mercy, kindness, and grace. Hallelujah. Satan didn't give up. He came back the second time and this time he uh, comes before the Lord and peers before the Lord. And Satan said to the Lord, skin for skin, yea, all a man hath, 
he'll give for his life. But put forth thine hand now and touch his bones and his flesh and he will curse thee to thy face. Interesting conversation. Can I take time for the golden nugget time? <laughs> Satan is talking. God is listening. Amen. He's trying to make his case and said, uh, if you touch him, and if you touch his skin, if you put an affliction on him, hallelujah, he will curse you to your face. That's what Satan said. But God said, okay. I heard you. He's in thy hand. Hata. Hata baloko shana. But you cannot have his life. Ah, tudo. Mira ya sana ma yeseneo. Ara boloba na masata. You can afflict him with sores from the top of his head to the bottom of his feet. You can take his money away. You can take his children away, but you can't have his life. His life belongs to me. His soul is mine. The dispensing of his soul, the assignment of his soul, the life of his soul, the death of his soul is in my hand. It is not in your hand. Hallelujah. Oh, I want to preach this the right way. You got to read them conversations. And you got to put them butts in there where they belong because that changes the whole dynamics of everything that's being said. You said this, but. <laughs> you declared this, but. You can't have his life. So Satan went forth from the presence of the Lord, the messenger of Satan. And he smote Job with sore boils from the sole of his foot unto his crown. And he took a potsherd or a piece of broken pottery and scraped himself with all. And he sat down among the ashes. Hallelujah. Isn't that right, church? Satan proposed to God that he would curse him to his face. Ooh, not that much. Ah, glory, glory. But God knows you. He knows how much to put on you. He knows how much you can bear. He knows what amount that you can really carry. I don't want to break you, but I want you to come closer to me. I want my strength to make me perfect in your weakness. I want you to learn about my grace. I want you to learn about what I'm able to do. I want you to shout and rejoice in the service of the Lord over what I'm able to do if I don't take you where I'm taking you. You won't have no testimony. Ooh. Hallelujah. God never answered the devil when he said he'll curse you to your faith. 
because he knew. Oh, I, I, I hope I can get this part over. I know I got to keep moving. But he knows how much you can bear. 1 Corinthians 10, 13 said, No temptation has taken you, but such as common to me. But what else? But God is faithful. Ain't he faithful? Uh, he's faithful. He will not put more on you than you are able to bear. And he will make a way of escape so that you can bear it. Woo. The devil is the accuser of the brethren, and he can accuse you before God all day long. But I came to encourage everybody that's listening to me. It goes in one ear and out the other as far as God is concerned. God said, I know who loves me. I know who serves me. I know who is true and who is not true. I know their hearts. I know their mind. I know their spirit. He'll curse you to your face. You're a liar, devil. Get out the way. I love the Lord, and I won't take it back. He's been too good to me. I love the way he helps me. I love the way he loves me. I love the way he heals me. I love the way he provides for me. I ain't taking it back. I'm not taking it back. We all know that in the end, when you get to the end of the book, <laughs> not chapter two, but the last chapter in the book of Job, the Bible said he blessed him more in his latter end than he did in his beginning. But Job could always look back and see how the devil tried to take it all away. But he couldn't take it all away because God had something else on the back end was greater than what you had on the front end. Woo, Jesus. I feel like preaching today. The messenger of Satan. He'll curse you to your face. Can't get that out of my mind. Why would a man or woman curse God? Because evil and bad things had happened to them. They lost their job. They lost their car. But a bona. God gave you the car. God gave you the job. He can give you another one. Why would you claim, even claim, that he did you wrong? Hallelujah. God is a good God. I say God is a good God. I'm going to move on because I don't have too much more time. But I'm going to take time to say what the Lord said. Don't be discouraged, children of God. 
Don't let your problems get you down. Don't let COVID-19 wipe you out. Maybe your money's bad, but God's still taking care of you. Amen. Hallelujah. Maybe there's violence everywhere, but you have lived right beside violence for years, and they have never blown all your windows out and killed you. Because that's a holy home. That's a place where sanctified people live. And God's presence is there. Paul said in verse 7 of our text, Lest I should be exalted above measure, through an abundance of revelations there was given unto me a thorn in the flesh and also... This is two separate things. The messenger of Satan came to buffet me. What was this for? Lest I should be exalted above measure. Number eight, for this thing I besought the Lord thrice, three times, that it might depart from me. Hallelujah. But I want you to know, church, that what God's will is cannot be changed. Hallelujah. He said, I said it, and I will bring it to pass. Hallelujah. What he has decreed will happen. Regardless to who is involved or what is involved, what God has decreed will happen. Paul had to go through this time in his life. He could have prayed six times or nine times. It would not have changed the mind of God or the will of God. Once God has purpose that this is what is going to happen, you might as well get down on your knees and start praying and get your little self together and get ready to go through. There's a lot of things you're going to have to go through. Not around, not over, but through, but through. Jesus went through the same thing in the Garden of Gethsemane. I'm giving you like comparisons. He knew that the cross was imminent. Chapter 26, the Bible said, My soul is exceedingly sorrowful, even unto death. He told his disciples, Carry ye here and watch with me. And he went a little further and fell on his face and prayed, Oh, my father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, as I will, not as I will, but as thou wilt. He came to his disciples and he found them asleep. And he said unto Peter, What? Could ye not watch with me one hour? Watch and pray that ye enter not into temptation. The Spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. 42, he went away again the second time and prayed, saying, Oh, my father, if this cup may not pass away from me, except 
I drink it. Thy will be done. Hallelujah. And he came and found them asleep, for their eyes were heavy, and he left them and went away again and prayed the third time with the same words. But once he had received the knowledge that this is not going to change, and this is not going to go away, <laughs> and God's will will hold supreme over top of my will, so I might as well submit myself to the will of God and go through the cross, die on the cross, shed my blood on the cross. Hallelujah. Because God is not and will not change his mind. Hallelujah. I know I'm telling you a lot of stuff today, but I believe that I'm telling you what God wants you to hear. We rush on quickly. Verse 9, our text, he said unto me, my grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Hallelujah. What he's saying there that in order for us to overcome human weaknesses, we have to go to God because God has sufficient grace, God has sufficient power, and God has sufficient strength to take us through. But if we leave him out of the equation, we will fail. I said we will fail. We need divine empowerment to do great works. We need the power of Christ in our lives to sustain us in human weakness. Hallelujah. And we need God greater than we ever needed him in our lives. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He said, my grace is sufficient. Hallelujah. Now the word sufficient means it is adequate and it is also enough. He'll never run short of divine empowerment with his grace because he has an ample supply. Hallelujah. We might get weak, but he is strong. His strength is made perfect. His strength is made complete in our weaknesses. Verse 10, he said, For when I am weak, then I am strong. Now, that's a paradox. That's something that a philosopher would say. How can you be weak and strong at the same time? What Paul's trying to say is, when my human weakness leaves off, then God's strength begins. When I've come to the end of the road and I cannot help myself, and I'm saying to myself, I've gone as far as I can go, I give up. I can't go no longer. God is saying, lean on me. Ooh. I'll help you. I'll lift you. I'll strengthen you. I've had as much as I can take. I can't take anymore. Lean on me when you're not strong. Hallelujah. My grace. <laughs> my grace is sufficient for thee. There's nothing too hard for God. Nothing too hard for him to do. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When you're not strong. <laughs> Hallelujah. I'm not making fun, but I, I love it. I watched the broadcast myself and uh, start speaking in time. I don't know what you get out of them, but I'd be, I'd be listening to myself. And there's something inside me saying, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. You know that's right, Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> but my last point is this in verse 10, which is, God's amazing grace that Paul said, and this is, this doesn't even sound right. This don't sound right. He says five things. He said, therefore I take pleasure in infirmities, reproaches, Necessities, persecutions, number five, distresses. Catch what he's saying, though. For Christ's sake. It's not it's something that I created myself, and now I'm trying to get out from underneath of it. I hope the Lord deliver me from this. But if I have to suffer for the name of Jesus, suffer as an apostle, suffer as a human being that's being persecuted even by a church that I founded myself. For Christ's sake, people talking about my body and my eyes and I'm trying my best to preach and teach the gospel of Jesus Christ. And somebody said, look at his eyes. His letters are weighty, but his bodily presence is contemptible. I love it. I love it. Y'all love this message? I love it. But he said, I've been through the fire, and I've been through the flood, and I've been through dark trials, but all through the blood. Hallelujah. All through the blood. Everywhere I went, infirmities, he was there. Ah, shut up. Reproaches, he was there. Hallelujah. Bad things that I went through, he was there. Necessities, didn't have enough food to eat, he was there. Persecution, because I'm saved, he was there. Distresses, he was there. For when I am weak. Then am I strong. God's amazing grace. 